In this video, we'll be looking at a few more examples of determining if a series converges conditionally, absolutely, or diverges. Here we have the sum from k equals 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the k plus 1 times k to the 2k all over k factorial times k factorial. So first we want to think about what kind of test we might be able to use on this particular series. So we notice where I have this k to the 2k, this is some sort of exponential term, and I have this k factorial, k factorial down here, so I definitely have some factorial terms involved. So we know that when I see something that has something that's exponential, whether it's k to the k or like 2 to the k, or when I have factorials involved, I want to try to use the ratio test. Okay, now we know that if the ratio test can be applied to a particular series, um, then that series will either converge absolutely or diverge. It won't um, converge conditionally because with the ratio test, we are already looking at um, the absolute value of the ratio of the terms. So if we're going to try the ratio test, I'm going to look at the limit as k goes to infinity of the absolute value of a k plus 1 all over a k. Okay, so we want to make sure we have our absolute value bars in there, and then that we um, correctly write down what our a k plus 1 is over our a k. So a k plus 1 will mean wherever there's a k, I replace that with k plus 1. So we have negative 1 to the k plus 1 plus 1, so this is to the k plus 2. Then I'm going to have k plus 1 to the 2 times k plus 1, so it's really important to remember our parentheses here. This is all over k plus 1, oops, excuse me, this is k plus 1 factorial times k plus 1 factorial. And we know this is divided by our ak, remember ak is exactly the term that I was um, given in my series. So divided by ak is going to be multiplied times the, uh, the reciprocal there, so this is going to be times k factorial, k factorial all over negative 1 to the k plus 1 times k to the 2k. And this is an absolute value. So now we look at trying to simplify this. So I have this is equal to the limit as k goes to infinity. Notice that um, negative 1 to the k plus 2, I could write as negative 1 to the k plus 1 times negative 1, because that's negative 1 to the 1, so with exponent rules that would become negative 1 to the k plus 2. Um, this k plus 1 to the 2k plus 1, this is going to be k plus 1 to the 2k plus 2, and then I have my k factorial, k factorial, all over. So here I've got this k plus 1 factorial times k plus 1 factorial. Uh, remember the factorial notation means that I'm doing k plus 1, and then times k, and then times k minus 1, etc., all the way down to 1. So k plus 1 factorial can be simplified to k plus 1 times k factorial. So we can see how we're going to get some cancellation with the k factorials we have in the numerator. I have this negative 1 to the k plus 1, I have at this, um, whoops, this is k to the 2k. So let's see what cancellation we can get. So these k factorials cancel with these k factorials. This negative 1 to the k plus 1 and negative 1 to the k plus 1 cancel. Notice that this is just a negative 1. When I take the absolute value of that negative 1, it's going to become positive. Um, and all of my other terms are positive, so in the next step I can just go ahead and drop those absolute value bars after taking the absolute value of my negative 1 term and getting it to be positive. Um, let's see what else we can do here. So I have this k plus 1 to the 2k plus 2, so I can write that as k plus 1 to the 2k times k plus 1 squared. This is going to be all over, let's see, I've got a k plus 1 and a k plus 1, so that's a k plus 1 squared, and then I have this k to the 2k, so notice that those cancel as well. Okay, so what do we have here? I have this limit as k goes to infinity of k plus 1 to the 2k over k to the 2k. So it's going to be helpful for me to write that um, in a combined form here, so I have k plus 1 over k all to the 2k. So I notice if I tried to take the limit of this as k goes to infinity, the inside, the k plus 1 over k would be going to 1, and 2k would be going to infinity. So this is a 1 to infinity indeterminate form. Okay, so we can't just say that that's equal to 1 or that's equal to infinity, we have to do some more work with this. 
So let's rewrite this here as our limit as k goes to infinity of Let's see, if this is k plus 1 over k, that's 1 plus 1 over k. I have this being raised to the 2k, but notice I can write that as being to the k, and then this whole thing squared, because when we do a, um, a power to a power, we would multiply those two things. So this should remind us of something that we had seen previously. So recall that we have the following fact. We know that the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 plus a over n to the n is equal to e to the a. So we had this um, fact here for um, what a limit of a certain form was equal to in terms of different powers of e. Okay, So we notice here that I have this 1 plus 1 over k to the k as k goes to the infinity. So the inside of this um, piece that we have here, the limit as k goes to infinity of that, would be going to e. So this is going to be going to e squared. Okay, So we're making use of this fact here. So I'm saying that this limit that I have goes to e squared since the limit as k goes to infinity of 1 plus 1 over k to the k would be converging to e to the 1 or to e. Okay, so since we got for our limit as k goes to infinity of this absolute value of a k plus 1 over a k was um, equal to e squared, we can say that since our e squared here is bigger than 1, the series in this case are sum from um, k equals 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the k plus 1, k to the 2k over k factorial, k factorial. This series here, k equals 1 to infinity, negative 1 to the k plus 1, k to the 2k, all over k factorial, k factorial, um, diverges. Okay, remember we got a value that's greater than 1, so that's similar to the thinking in our geometric series test. We have these, these ratios um, that are going to something bigger than 1, so adding up a bunch of things with the, that ratio that's bigger than 1 means that we have something that diverges. So this series diverges by the ratio test. Okay. All right, so let's look at one more example in this video here, looking at a question of whether something converges um, absolutely, conditionally, or whether it diverges. So here I have a sum from k equals 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the k over k to the 0.99. So I need to think about what kind of test I'm going to use on this. Um, I notice that this is an alternating series. I also notice that what I have here in the denominator is a power type of function. So I don't have something that's exponential. I don't have something like 2 to the k um, or k to the k. And I don't have something that's a factorial. So um, we know that when I have something that's a power type function only, and it's not multiplied times a factorial or an exponential thing, um, I don't want to use the ratio test. Because in those situations where I just have something that's made up of power type functions, my ratio test is going to be inconclusive. So let's just look briefly at why. If I tried the ratio test, I'd have the limit as k goes to infinity here of my absolute value of a k plus 1 over a k being equal to the limit as k goes to infinity. Um, when I have this negative 1 to the k plus 1, over k plus 1 to the 0.99 divided by my ak, so that'll be times k to the 0.99 over negative 1 to the k. This is all an absolute value. Okay, So the fact that I have this negative 1 power and this other negative 1 power, um, negative 1 to the k plus 1 over negative 1 to the k would just be negative 1, but the absolute value of that would just be 1. So I'm going to have this limit as k goes to infinity here of k over k plus 1 to the 0.99. Well, I can see that k over k plus 1 as k goes to infinity is going to 1. 1 to this 0.99 power is just going to be 1. So we know in that case the ratio test is inconclusive. Okay, So just by saying, OK, this is a power type function, I don't want to use the ratio test, I wouldn't have had to do out all that work. But we just did that just to show ourselves why um, ratio test wasn't going to be useful here. So instead, I need to follow my um, 
procedure here of how do I determine if something's absolutely convergent or conditionally convergent? Well, first I look at the sum of the absolute value. Okay, we know that we didn't break it up into um, specifically thinking about that right away with the ratio test because the ratio test is automatically looking at, at absolute value. Um, here I'm going to start by looking at the sum of the absolute value so I can try to determine whether this series is absolutely convergent or not. So I'm thinking of my AKs um, that I have here being negative 1 to the k over k to the 0.99. So my sum of the absolute value of the AKs is going to be a sum from k equals 1 to infinity of 1 over k to the 0.99. So I can see that that's just a nice um, p-series here. So this series is going to diverge by the p-series test since I have a p-value here of 0.99, which is less than or equal to 1. Okay, So we just showed that the sum of the absolute value is divergent, which means that my original sum here um, is definitely not absolutely convergent. So I just need to figure out if the series is divergent or if it's actually conditionally convergent. So then we'll look at the original sum itself here, which is my sum from k equals 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the k over k to the 0.99. And I see that that is, again, an alternating series with the uh, magnitude of the terms, which I'm going to call bk, being equal to 1 over k to the 0.99. Okay, so that's the, the positive part that doesn't have any sign information in it. So to apply the alternating series test to this, I'd like to be able to show that my bk's go to zero as k goes to infinity, and that bk plus one is less than or equal to bk. So first we can look at that limit piece. So the limit as k goes to infinity of one over k to the 0.99. Yep, that's going to zero, so we have that condition. Notice that bk plus 1 would be 1 over k plus 1 to the 0.99. So I want to be able to show that bk plus 1 is less than or equal to bk. So I can't just state it, but I can say that for k greater than or equal to 1, it's definitely true that k plus 1 is bigger than or equal to k. And then if I raise both sides of my inequality to that 0.99 power, that preserves my inequality. And then if we do the reciprocal of each side, well, that's going to flip that inequality. Okay, so I do in fact have bk plus 1 less than or equal to bk like I want. Okay, so I can say so. My series here does converge by the alternating series test. Okay. So remember when we're doing showing that something is conditionally convergent, we have three steps. The first step was showing that the sum of the absolute value um, was actually diverging. Here now I've shown that the my um, series itself, my sum of my AKs, converges by the alternating series test. So my final conclusion here would be that so this series here, k equals 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the k over k to the 0.99 is conditionally convergent. Okay, So we want to be careful when we're making our final conclusion. We would not say that the series is conditionally convergent by the alternating series test. The series is conditionally convergent because the sum of AK converges, but the sum of the absolute value um, does not converge. So this is because, basically because of our work in steps 1 and 2, our sum of this here converges and the sum of 1 over k to the 0.99 diverges. So when you're having your ultimate conclusion of conditional convergence, that's not by a single test. Something can't be conditionally convergent by just one test. It's conditionally convergent because you have some information about two different series where your sum of your AKs converge, but your sum of the absolute value of your AKs diverge.